This short video is going to show you how energy is produced inside the cell. We'll look at the electron transport chain, we'll look at ATP synthase, we'll have a look at the citric acid cycle and how glycolysis feeds into it. It's not meant to be an in-depth description of each of these interval steps, it's just a broad overview of what is going on through the process. Now the molecule we're interested in making is ATP. It's energy rich and it's used to drive many biochemical processes inside the cell. The phosphate group on this side of the molecule has high energy bonds linking these phosphates together and it's the hydrolysis of these that releases energy that drives our biochemical reactions. So we need within the cell to create a ready source of ATP. To do this we use an enzyme called ATP synthase. Now ATP synthase sits inside the mitochondria in between the inner and the outer membrane. Your mitochondria is set up to produce a proton gradient. Now on one side of the membrane there is a high concentration of protons compared to the other side. As these protons attempt to redress the balance they're forced through ATP synthase which uses the energy of it flooding back through to take the ADP and the phosphate group to produce ATP. ATP synthase is like a small rotary motor. It takes the energy of the protons flowing back through it to rotate this F1 region and use that rotation to drive the formation of ATP from ADP. To drive that enzyme we're going to need to set up a proton gradient. To do that, we use the electron transport chain. And there are a number of proteins named pro complex 1, 2, 3, and 4, along with cytochrome C, that are used to create and generate that proton gradient such that it can drive ATP synthase. Complex 1, represented here, establishes the hydrogen ion gradient by pumping four hydrogen ions across the membrane from the matrix into the intermembrane space. It does this by using the energy from NADH, which is an electron carrier. Complex 2 receives FADH2, which is also an electron carrier. It's able to bypass the first complex because it has a lower um, redox energy as composed to NADH and delivers electrons directly into the electron transport chain. Now ubiquinone here accepts electrons from both complex 1 and complex 2 and delivers them into complex 3. Complex 3 pumps protons through the membrane. It passes its electrons to cytochrome C for transport to the fourth complex of proteins and enzymes. Complex 4 then reduces oxygen. And its reduction of oxygen then picks up two hydrogens from the surrounding medium to make water. In the process of doing that, they're going to be pumping through protons to the other side of the membrane. The energy comes from these electron carriers NADH and FADH. So where do we get the NADH and the FADH from? We're going to need to reduce this NAD plus to NADH in some way. The TCA cycle is set up to produce NADH to drive that reaction and for each turn of this TCA cycle NADH molecules are produced. Now the TCA cycle is shown here. It uses energy that has been fed into it to drive the reduction of NAD plus to NADH at a number of steps within the cycle. Molecules can be fed in at a number of different points, but one of the key molecules is acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A can be generated from pyruvate, and the enzyme that does this is pyruvate dehydrogenase. Its role is to convert pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. In the process of doing that, it releases another NADH. Now, glycolysis is the metabolic pathway that is used to convert glucose to pyruvate. Glucose is broken down in a number of different steps until you reach the pyruvate molecule, which can be broken down and altered into acetyl coenzyme A to feed the TCA cycle. So, in summary, to make ATP, we need to drive the enzyme ATP synthase, shown here in red. This enzyme takes ADP, combines it with a phosphate group to produce our ATP. To do that, it uses the energy stored from a proton gradient. These protons move through this particular enzyme 
and by its spinning around it generates this particular molecule. So to generate our ATP we need to drive the enzyme ATP synthase. To do this we set up a proton gradient. The proton's gradient equalizes itself by coming through the ATP synthase and combines ADP with phosphate groups producing our ATP. We need to set up our proton gradient. To set up our proton gradient we use the electron transport chain with complexes 1 through to 4 being responsible for pumping those protons into the inner membrane space. The energy they need to do this comes from the oxidation of NADH and FADH. Those NADH and FADH electron carriers are generated from the TCA cycle and we feed the TCA cycle in this instance by the use of acetyl coenzyme A. We generate our acetyl coenzyme A from pyruvate through the action of pyruvate dehydrogenase. We can generate more pyruvate through the breakdown of glucose. If you want to know more about ATP synthase, click on the video that you should find down there. And if you want to know more about the TCA cycle, click on the videos that you should find just there.